I, I, I've never understood it, to be honest. Uh, Michael, do you think we have a problem in this country moving on from players who have, like you rightly said, been there and done something before? Oh, there's a huge problem. There's always yeah. been there. There's always been. Uh, the ex-players union will always tell you, and some of my greatest friends, Stephen Apiala, Kingston, are always going on about Neil Datilamte, how we, we are not, never grateful to ex-players and how we hound them off the stage. Yeah. Um, I've always said to people that a footballer is your best friend until he gets to the stage when he's about to retire and you suggest he must retire. Mm -hmm. So I remember Ibrahim Sani having issues with Samuel Asai Kufo. Uh, there were issues myself at some point with um, Richard Kinson. I've had one recently with, with yeah. Asamoah Jan. I think they just don't like it. Now, what we do as journalists though is that we try to become a balance between public opinion and what these players want. Right. My thinking is very simple. We don't have to be grateful for players for representing Ghana. We give them our shirt. We give them a chance at a 17 level we give them a chance at another 20 level, we give them the national teams, we fly them on business class tickets, we pay them great amounts of money to represent us, mm -hmm. we give them a platform that enhances their club careers. I want to see one player who didn't get off the back of Ghana to get to where they are. From Andre Ayu to Michael Essien when he started as an under 17 in 1999. Or Richard Kinson when he played more club games during a period, more national team games during a period than he played club football. Or when we took Stephen Apia to the World Cup in 2014 as a thank you gesture. But it, we don't need to be grateful to the players for playing for us. What have you done? You represent us. You want to play for the national team, you play for the national team, you don't play for free. We pay you great amounts of money. True. In 2014, when we had that chaotic World Cup campaign, players walked away with a minimum $100,000 in appearance fee. Right. In, in 2006, when players qualified us for the World Cup, they earned good money. When the likes of Muntari, Jan and the rest, that was the beginning of the making of their careers. True. Jan's career at some point was going nowhere until he, he resurrected himself with the Black Stars at the World Cup and got his big break. So I'm saying that this thing called the Black Stars, this national team that, that we are constantly told we should be grateful. Right. We, we should... You know, we should, we are never grateful to the players and it's, we really don't need to be grateful. Mm. And it's like a carousel. Your back comes, you pick it up, you walk on. You don't pick up your carousel or it's like walking on the streets of New York. No standing here. Walk on, move on. Because there are lots of people who are using the pathway. Yeah. You, you, you move on, so the next person comes, they move on. That is what the national team is. The national team is supposed to be something you compete to get into. Mm -hmm. I want these players to be honest with themselves, look themselves in the mirror when they wake up in the morning and they're, they're taking all the videos to come and respond to our criticisms on social media. They should look themselves in the face. If we don't call them up for the national teams, do they beg behind the scenes? Do they do everything within their power? Do they post their goals? Do they get the people to talk about them? They do. You'd go to every extent possible right. to get into the national team. And then when we suggest that, you know, we, you know, somebody else deserves it more, you get angry. No, this is the national team. It is, not, it is not a place where we babysit anybody. We babysit big egos. You don't babysit people at national team level. I really, I, I don't think that we should get into this, but we are, it's almost like we are free to do it. Right. And that's the one thing I don't understand. We should never feel sorry for demanding the highest standard possible from our national team. It is, it is what it is. This is the, it's the black stars. All of them will line up to be, would desperately want to be on that platform. They want to go to the World Cup. How many of us don't want to go to a tournament and come back with $100,000? Regardless of how much money anybody says they have. $100,000 is a lot of money. You know, how many of them... And I, I, you know, the funny thing is that I interview these players every time I have a chat with Kojas and when he says to me, sometimes, you know, you are home and everybody's going for international duty and you're thinking. I remember having a chat with Bernard Mensah recently when he was called up and he said he just couldn't deal with the fact that he got called up and he wasn't called up again. And a lot of the things and the decisions he began to take at club level were all with getting into the, into, back into wow. the national team in mind. Wow. 
You know, we told you respect to Asamoja, and he's been of great service to the national team. We all recognize But when we that, put yeah. you at number nine, what are we expecting you to do? Walk in and do nothing? You're supposed to score goals. Yeah. Effectively, you're doing your job, and he's done his job to the absolute best of his ability. But when it gets to a point where you begin to think, this will serve us better, that will serve us better, it's part of our job. So yeah. this idea of ex-players constantly reminding us about why we must be grateful to the national team and, and, and we must be grateful to the players for serving us and we must be grateful to them and, 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 we, 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 and we talk too much about them. What do you want to do? <laughs> we pay you all that money, we should keep quiet when you're doing things wrong. It doesn't work that way. Yeah.